Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. You can also join as a channel member for only 79 cents per month to get special perks. Good. So check out that join button. Today we're going to jump back into the past. Not long past, but a couple of months back when I went downtown Calgary to my favorite brick and mortar pen shop, Reed Stationers, and bought the pen I will be reviewing today, the Narwhal Parpita Navy. When I got the pen back in July, I reached out to Frank Zheng, the CEO of the company, and asked a couple of questions as I was preparing a review. Frank wrote me back immediately and answered all my questions, but asked me to hold off doing my review for a few weeks as he was just getting new stock out to his distributors. Well, this worked out perfectly in line with my short hiatus, as Frank just emailed me the other day saying that retailers should be getting stock right about now. And I've seen notices from some online retailers announcing the new stock of the Narwhal Propita Navy fountain pen. So first up, let me take you back to July and the streets of downtown Calgary right now. <music> Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with a special fountain pen review. It is special because I'm on location today. Thanks to science, we're starting to get back to normal. We're still under restrictions here in Alberta, but our vaccination rates are going up and our positive cases are going down. That's all great news. I know I've been locked in my basement with my fountain pens way too long. And that's why today I'm standing in front of my favorite brick and mortar pen and stationery store, Reed Stationers in Calgary, Alberta. Reed's has been around for a long time and I continue to try to shop here as much as possible to keep them going. We've all been shopping online a lot during the pandemic and many times online stores from the US, the UK and the EU have a real price advantage over retail storefronts like Reed's. Reed's has employees and overhead to deal with. But today I'm totally stoked to be picking up a new fountain pen from a new brand for me from this awesome pen shop. Let's go in and get my pen right now. And that's a limited edition. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, either. I like finding stuff out. I looked it up after I put it away. Look how pretty it is. Wait a minute. Uh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> the nib is nice on these, hey? Mm hmm. They make them in house. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a good really job. Which is really surprising. This is a nice nib. Look at it. It's going to give you a nice cursive on there. Oh no, that's unacceptable. <laughs> I knew you were joking. <laughs> but this price for a piston filler is Can just incredible. It? I know. And it's like a different feeling than twisty completely. Mm -hmm. Let's check it out. It does pose, but you're on the piston knob. That's dangerous. But the ink window is nice. I like that. Yeah. I don't post my pen so much anymore because I had an accident where I blew my top off. Uh oh. And it scratched the top. So now I have really bad hands. Yeah. 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 Y
That's pretty. Good choice. Yeah. And then Shinkai is just right there. It's yes, nice. and I'm not really fond of blue blacks, but uh, this looks really like nice a really blue nice blue it's, not, it's not depressing at all. Like, it's not. I'm the yeah, same. we don't want depressing. You don't, like, <laughs> some blue blacks come across as really, like, oof, right? Yeah. No, that, this is nice. And then that one also has a little bit of a sheen to it. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Be. Okay, Doug, pen, ink, anything else for you? No, I think that's enough for today. Okay. All of your I have to take my wife to lunch now. All right, nice. <laughs> Where are you guys going to go? We're going to Chianti's in the south. Oh, I love it. Good. Enjoy it. You can have some clown linguine. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are we having, Wynn? What are you having? Oh, um, fettuccine vengoli. Oh, that's, see, that's, that's what I clam. like. Yeah, yeah the clams clam and white wine, of course. Nice. See? Mont Blanc, Lamy, Graf von Faber Castell. All the good stuff. Oh, gift yeah, bag. Look at that. Ooh. 101 12, please. Oh, you must be special. It's a bargain of twice nice, the price. That's a nice bag. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> they hold, they're great for ink because they, they hold a. Uh, don't bust through the bottles. I don't own a Mont Blanc, but maybe. Oh, one day. I have the bag for it now. It's going to cost you a lot more lunches than today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally going to have Chianti or uh, Bongiorno's for dinner tonight. I'm going to get I'm the I'm so Mongolia. glad they're open. I was yeah. afraid they had gone under. They actually had some customers buy it. Oh. So four of these guys that were regular customers all uh, <laughs> chipped in and yep. spent their money. And, and then right after they bought it, that's when everything shut. But they mm -hmm. held in there, right? So yep. Yeah, it's a staple on 17th, that's for sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Doc. Thank you. Have a really nice lunch. Nice we will. Enjoy Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Narwhal is a new pen brand for me. I had assumed the brand was based in the U.S. as Schoolkill is the name of a river that runs through Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But they are made in Taiwan and the company is based in California. The narwhal is a small whale, similar and closely related to the beluga whale, but it has the distinctive feature of a single long tusk, which is an elongated canine tooth. The narwhal pen company logo shows a stylized uh, narwhal but it makes the mistake of adding a dorsal fin. Narwhals, like belugas, don't have dorsal fins. But the pen company certainly has a thing for marine life. Why the Schuylkill River comes into the naming of this pen brand, I can't begin to guess. But the model's name is Porpita. And again, it's derived from marine life. The Porpita is a marine organism that resembles a small jellyfish, but is in fact a colony of polyps. This is an acrylic piston filler, and the acrylic is a swirled blues, turquoise, reds, and coppers. The pen is very light and smooth, and the material has a plastic feel to it rather than the feel of acrylic. So much so that that was one of the questions I asked of Frank. Was this plastic or actually turned acrylic? He responded that it is, indeed, custom-made acrylic turned by them. I think the other thing that made me think this was plastic was the lack of depth uh, to the acrylic. The swirling patterns are very pretty, uh, very nice, and I love the mixture of the turquoise and the rusty copper. The turquoise is not showing up as turquoise on my camera, um, but it is in fact turquoise. But there isn't the depth of acrylic like you see on Moon Man or a pen BBS, or even a Leonardo. So let's take a closer look. From the top, we see a smooth chamfered edge flat top finial with a domed metal medallion in the center of it. The clip is broad, gold colored metal with a shape that is vaguely similar uh, to the Pelican. Vaguely similar to the Pelican and it's offset out of the acrylic cap and is fairly stiff, but it is usable. The cap tapers up to about here, where it's straight to the rolled edge of the cap. There's about a millimeter step down 
to the barrel which tapers down to a gold colored ring which separates the blind cap of the piston knob which ends in a domed finial. The first five millimeters of the barrel are an ink window uh, which allows you to see your ink levels. Very convenient. The cap unscrews with one slightly over two rotations to reveal a tapering section which is a continuation of the barrel and the section ends with a small flare and we see the number six size gold colored steel narwhal nib. Frank says these nibs are made in-house by narwhal. He says the nib is friction fit and can be swapped with any standard number six size nib if you use the narwhal feed. Let's take a closer look at this nib. It has some really nice scroll work which look like rolling waves and a lovely engraving of uh, the narwhal logo uh, with some curls on the bottom that look like splashes from the narwhal jumping. It's a nice touch. The section isn't removable and these threads are noticeable but not uncomfortable. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the inside wall which meets with the section to seal the cap. The cap posts but only on the piston knob which makes the pen too long, too unbalanced, and too dangerous as that cap can actually turn the piston very easily and spew out ink. Danger, Will Robinson, danger! The piston knob actually works very, very easily and smoothly. And the ink window is a nice addition to check your ink levels. Like all piston fillers that don't have removable sections, they are a bear to clean as you can spend hours filling and emptying the pen with water. But you can pull this nib and feed and go in through the front of the section with a blunt syringe or a bulb syringe to speed things up. Now I failed to mention because the box was opened in the store as you saw uh, the contents of the box. It has a narwhal user guide and warranty and a filling guide there and the warranty is valid for one year starting from the original purchase date. And of course, with the pen came a little wrench to unscrew the piston for cleaning. I didn't mention that earlier. And I should have mentioned it because the, uh, the wrench doesn't actually fit the flats of that rod. Oh! Oh! Gee! Did it hurt? No. Does this? Oh! Yeah. Ah. So I didn't even try to do it uh, because just trying to get the wrench on there, you can see I scratched uh, the edges of that unit. I was able to pull the nib and feed and fit a syringe down inside the barrel and clean that out fairly quickly with a syringe. I should also mention that the Narwhal School Kill comes in some other finishes other than the Porpita Navy. It comes in marlin blue, chromis teal, and rockfish red. Unposted, the pen is very nicely balanced in the hand. It has a really nice girth and length, and the lightness of the pen and the smooth feel of that acrylic make it a very, very comfortable pen to write with. I bought this pen, as you saw, from Reed Stationers in Calgary for around $75 Canadian. It's currently on sale at Gold Spot Pens for $60 US, which is pretty much the same price. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Narwhal Schoolkill Porpita Navy with a Pelican M800, a Pen BBS 309, a Twisby Diamond 580, and a Leonardo Furore Grande. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the Narwhal and the Twisby are way too long to use posted. The Pelican M800 posts like a dream. The uh, Pen BBS 309 actually uh, posts very nicely, as does the Ferrari Grande. 
Let's look at some measurements, and then I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is 90 JSM Clairefontaine paper, and this is the Narwhal. I won't post it. Narwhal. School killed. Say that five times fast. Porpita. Navy. And it has a medium steel nib. Long name. Now, before we start the writing sample, I have to tell you that I've written with this pen for a few weeks. I inked it up with the Eroshizuku Shinkai that I bought from Carrie at Reed's, you saw that, the day I picked it up. Although the pen was very smooth, it tended to have some, well, I'm just going to call it drag on the paper, not feedback, not scratching at all, but sluggishness moving the nib across the page, just drag. I also experienced some degree of skipping on the downstrokes or the fast loops of some of my descenders. Here are some images from my journal that show what I mean. As you can see, the tops of some of the letters and the faster loops were skipping. I took this to mean that the feed wasn't keeping up. Thinking that the ink might be a little dry, although every other Iroshizuku ink I've got is pretty silky and smooth, I decided to clean out the pen and ink it up again. This time with Iroshizuku Kanpeki. Now I know this ink really well. It's very well behaved and nicely wet in every pen I've tried it with. As you can see, it is still relatively dry, the nib. Uh, it's very smooth. Very, very smooth. And doesn't drag as much with the Kanpeki. So I'm thinking that the Kanpeki is better lubricated than the Shinkai. And here are some close matches to Kanpeki from Inkswatch.com. I also think the Kanpeki is a better match for the blue-green in the pen. Unfortunately, the camera is not picking up that turquoise blue-green, but it is a nice match. As to line variation, well, you're not going to get much at all. It's very stiff. This line is 0.7 millimeters in thickness which makes it a western medium to broad or a Japanese broad it's much closer to a broad than a medium I'm quite surprised by that the nibs must be made with a Western market in mind rather than Taiwan. And some reverse writing. It's actually very smooth, but as you can see, it dries out very, very quickly. And some quick writing. As you can see, having some issues keeping up, which uh, sort of confirms my feeling that the feed is not supplying the nib or the nib needs to be uh, wettened up a little bit. Uh, let's see whether I can give it the seven strokes to Doug's magic happiness and whether it might wet that pen a little bit better. One, two, three, four. Six. Seven times is the charm. 
Yeah, it's much wetter now. Let's try it again. Yeah, it's still skipping a little bit. It's a little bit better, but it's still skipping a little bit. Even though the Konpeki ink makes the pen slightly wetter with less drag, I'm still getting some of that skipping on the upstrokes and the quick strokes. It also feels like the nib is a bit over polished and might have a touch of baby's bottom. So I'm going to work on this nib a little bit and try some micro mesh on it to get a little tooth into it because it's a little bit slippery um, and get a little bit more of that tip touching the page. I'm sure it will feel a bit more comfortable writing as well as I'm finding my handwriting to be all over the place with this nib. And for our quote. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this pen. The price, number one. This is an awesome piston filler with a number six size nib for just $60 US. And I like this pen so much better than my Twisby Diamond 580, which has a number five size nib. I like big nibs, I cannot lie. Okay, I like where this is going. Let's take it from the top. I like big butts and I cannot lie. And the Twisby is $15 more than the Narwhal and is made from injection molded plastic, not turned acrylic like the Narwhal. The only other piston filler uh, made from turned acrylic that is under this price point is the Pen BBS 309. The 309 is not as girthy as this pen or as comfortable and suffers from a sticky piston issue that doesn't seem to go away. So I'd have to say the Narwhal is the better bargain. Plus you won't have the cracking barrel issues that Twisby doesn't seem to be able to fix. Yeah, it, plug it up the pen is light and extremely comfortable in the hand. I love the ink window. It's nice to have a non-demonstrator piston filler uh, that has an ink window. I like the fact that Narwhal is making their own nibs and sizing them for the Western market. Since their company is based in California, I'm not surprised. So what do I not like about this pen? Well, the nib, as you can see, has issues for me. I think it might just be over polished and so I'll work on it. It's also way broader than I expected out of a medium. There's a ton of tipping material on this nib, so I might have to give it to Jack Hernandez and have him carve it into an architect for me. Another thing I'll complain about is the lack of depth with the acrylic. And this just might be personal taste or the fact that I've been spoiled by pen BBS acrylics for too long. It is a very pretty pen, there is no question. The final thing is the posting. Now, I don't mind writing with this pen unposted, but come on, guys. If Pelican can do it with their piston filler, so can you. I didn't do it. Look at this Pelican M800. How amazing it is posted and unposted. What does that take? Half a millimeter? I don't know, I'm no engineer. Monica wants to be an engineer. But this pen is sublime right here. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 79 cents a month and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section. And you get cool emojis and stickers, too. Good. Good, okay. Does anyone have anything to add to what that girl just said? And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.